Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. We are starting a new series this week, a new gut health series. And for anyone who's been listening for any length of time, you'll know that this is probably my favorite topic um, because gut health is paramount to the overall health and well-being of our children and of us as adults as well. So I love delving into this topic. It's super fascinating. Um, Over the next four weeks, we are going to be diving into gut health. And we're starting today with uncovering the cause of your kids' digestive symptoms or tummy troubles. Um, Next week, we are going to be moving on and talking a bit more about food allergies and intolerances and what the medical approach to these issues is missing. Then we are delving into the microbiome. What is the microbiome and why is it so important when it comes to your kids' health and well-being? And the fourth episode, I'm going to help you understand how healthy your child's gut and digestive system is. I'm going to take you through a quiz on the podcast, uh, which is going to be super fun. But as I said today, we're starting this gut health series uh, with the topic of uncovering the cause of your kids' digestive issues. Um, So let's dive in. As a naturopath, you know, I I see a lot of and hear of a lot of digestive issues in kids. They seem to become be becoming more and more common. Um, and so, yeah, I want to talk today about some of the big ones that we see here at Natural Super Kids: constipation, diarrhea or loose bowel movements. Um, you know, tummy pain, uh, which can be really confusing when it comes to kids, particularly young kids, because they can ex- they can say they've got a tummy ache when it's more like a headache, um, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, it is also really common for kids to get sore tummies regularly. Um, we're also going to be talking about uh, reflux or otherwise known as GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, um, and also gastrointestinal infections, the dreaded gastro. Um, so they're the, they're the sort of um, digestive issues that we're going to be diving into. But before we get to those, and I talk you through some of the common underlying causes of these digestive issues in children, I want to start by talking about um, the the contrast, I guess, between Western medical approach when it comes to digestive symptoms um, and the naturopathic approach that we base our sort of treatment protocols and advice on here at Natural Super Kids. So if you take a child to the doctor, um, to your GP with, say, constipation, let's take constipation as the first example, more often than not, they're going to be prescribed or recommended some sort of laxative or stool softener. Um, So laxatives work by stimulating the nerves in the large intestine to force contents through. Um, Stool softeners work by adding moisture to the stool and allow for easier sort of passing of that bowel movement. So these work for constipation. They help the body get 
the, the, you know, have a regular bowel movement. Sometimes, you know, it can sort of go the opposite way and, um, you know, you can end up with loose bowel movements, diarrhea, that sort of thing. But, and, and look, laxatives and stool softeners definitely have their place, but they're not getting to the underlying cause of what's going on for that child. These, um, these medications are basically doing the job of the body uh, for it, um, you know, stimulating the nerve so that the the bowel contracts and forces, you know, the contents through, as I said. Um, but why is the stool hard to pass in the first place? Why is the constipation present in the first place? And that's what we sort of dive into further um, from a naturopathic perspective. And we'll talk about that in a moment with con- with constipation. The other really good example is a, that is regularly prescribed to children uh, re- is reflux medications or proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. These work by decreasing the amount of acid that the stomach makes. Now, remember, stomach acid is an important part of the digestive process. So decreasing the amount of stomach acid made in the stomach as a way to reduce symptoms of reflux where that stomach acid is coming up to the esophagus where it sort of shouldn't be for some reason. Uh, Yes, it works to reduce those symptoms of reflux, but again, you're not getting to the underlying cause. Why is that child experiencing reflux in the first place? And we're going to talk about some of those common underlying causes of reflux for kids as well. So yes, medications when it comes to digestive complaints, symptoms, conditions can have their place, but we don't want to be relying on them long term. We really do want to be looking for uncovering and addressing the underlying cause of our kids' digestive symptoms for that longer-term solution. Once we know what it is that's causing the problem or at least have some sort of understanding as to, you know, some of those common contributors, then we can start to work, um, you know, from the ground up essentially. And with our naturopathic philosophy and principles and approach to digestive issues in kids, we are supporting the body to optimize the digestive processes, the digestive function, um, and eliminate anything that that could be causing problems. So that's a little bit of a a run through of, you know, uh, some examples of of the different approach. And as I said, I'm definitely not anti-medications like laxatives, like stool softeners, like PPIs, um, but we want to be, you know, maybe using those short term for symptomatic relief. You know, if anyone's had a baby struggling with reflux, we know how exhausting that can be and how awful it can be seeing our babies struggle with that. But you know, a PPI or a a reflux medication for a baby is not the be all and end all to, um, you know, overcoming their reflux issues and can lead to uh, more issues down the track as well. And a really great analogy that I've been using lately, um, you know, to sort of explain this this difference, uh, something that mu- all mums probably relate to is the house cleaning, you know, keeping a somewhat <laughs> tidy, clean house. So we all have those days, those weeks, maybe even those months where we're just keeping our head above water and we're doing those surface cleans, you know, we're just keeping things tidy um, and maybe we're taking shortcuts, you know, let's say we're sweeping the floor, we might lift the rug up and sweep <laughs> sweep the, um, the pile of dirt under the rug rather than picking it up. Um, hopefully we're not doing that too often, but that's a really, that, that, that's really like addressing our kids' health issues with pharmaceutical medication. We're just sweeping them under the rug. We're, we're getting rid of the, the mess, the symptoms, um, but we're not sort of um, doing that deeper clean or better still addressing the cause of why is our floor getting so dirty all the time? Of course, little kids uh, will do this. Bigger kids will as well. Um, but, you know, what about getting into the habit of everyone taking their shoes off at the door. That is going to drastically reduce the amount of dirt that's on the floor. And that is 
a very similar approach to what we're doing with naturopathy. Let's get to the bottom of why this floor is so dirty all the time or why this child is experiencing these symptoms and let's eliminate that cause um, so that we've got less of the sweeping under the carpet to do and we don't need to rely on those medications so much. Um uh, so yeah, hopefully that analogy kind of helps explain it a little bit for you. So let's run through some of the common digestive symptoms, conditions, complaints that we see in children that are really common in children and explore some of the common underlying causes. So let's start with constipation. Um, so constipation is a big problem. This is well, one of the biggest digestive concerns we see here at Natural Super Kids through all ages of children. And it can cause a lot of discomfort. It can cause a lot of flow on negative effects on the health. Um, you know, it can affect a child's appetite, their energy, their sleep, um, all of those things. And there are many different underlying causes that can be contributing to constipation. A big one is diet, obviously. So not having enough fiber in the diet, it can be as simple as this with, with children. And so we want to be looking at our children's fiber intake. Are they getting enough? You know, we may need a health practitioner to help us work, work this out. Um, but inadequate fiber intake, you know, we can give our child a laxative to force their body to expel, you know, the bowel movement or we can look at, hang on, maybe my child is really not getting enough fiber, which is not just causing constipation, but it's also causing, you know, a breakdown of, of the gut, um, the, the gut wall and, and causing leaky gut and intestinal permeability. So without addressing the underlying cause, you know, we can, it can lead to further issues down the track, which is another reason it's so important. So of course, inadequate fiber intake, as I said, low fluid intake is a big one as well. Lack of physical activity. Our bowel is a muscle. And if we're not moving enough as more and more, you know, of us in the Western world aren't, that can lead to the bowel becoming lazy and not, um, you know, the muscles not contracting enough and leading to constipation. With kids with constipation, you know, emotional stress can be at play, fear of going to the toilet, perhaps um, this can be a bit of a cycle because if a child is prone to constipation, they can have a, a painful bowel movement or an unpleasant experience and then they're holding on, they're, they're scared to go to the toilet again. So these are all things that, you know, we can look at addressing in gentle ways. And then there are things like certain medications can cause constipation and underlying medical conditions. Um can cause constipation as well. Um, and then there's dysbiosis, so an imbalance of the bacteria within the digestive tract. This has a huge influence on constipation, actually. Research um, has found that an imbalance in gut bacteria is linked to constipation and slower bowel movements. This can become a vicious cycle. So the imbalance can cause constipation, but then the constipation itself alters the balance of bacteria, which exacerbates the problem. Um, and, you know, we, we know, well, many of us know a bit about the gut microbiome. I'm going to be exploring that in depth in a couple of episodes. Uh, but the the microbiome, the, the good bacteria within our gut are thought to play a supportive role in the motility, the muscle contractions that move food through the digestive tract. So maintaining a healthy balance of bacteria is key for healthy bowel movements. So rather than a laxative to force, you know, that muscle contraction, how about we work on you know, boosting and balancing our kids' gut microbiomes so that those muscle contractions help uh, are, are happening naturally because they've got a more balanced gut. So you can see there, you know, the different sort of approaches and hopefully running through those common underlying causes of constipation in kids can be helpful for you to go, oh, hang on, maybe on I, I can I can look at that. And of course you can use pharmaceutical medications, laxatives, stool softeners at the same time that you're working on this stuff. But really key to be looking at the underlying cause. 
let's look at diarrhea or loose bowel movements or frequent bowel movements. So I'm talking here about ongoing issues with loose um, and frequent bowel movements, not when you've got a a sick tummy or or a gastro infection. So underlying causes of, um, of this kind of issue Often it can be viral or bacterial infections. You know, these can be more long lasting and chronic as opposed to gastro, you know, the gastro infections we might think about that last one or two days. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, again, that that dysbiosis um, imbalance in, of the bacteria in the gut can be a big contributor when it comes to uh, frequent loose bowel movements. Food allergies or or intolerances are big here as well. You know, a child might be reacting to something. Uh, It might not be all that obvious. You know, it can take up to 72 hours for our kids to have an intolerance sort of reaction or a sensitivity reaction to a food. So we might be thinking, well, I don't know, they just ate um, some fruit, and then they they've had uh, this issue. Uh, what could it? You know, what could it be? Um, so it is important to be looking back, not just at the last meal they had when they have these symptoms, but the the last couple of days, and see if you can pick up any sort of patterns there. Um, and on fruit, fructose intolerance is fairly common in children and can lead to diarrhea type symptoms. So kids can actually react to, um, you know, too much fruit or they can be intolerant to fructose, which is high in fruit. So that's a common um, intolerance linked with diarrhea. There can also be things like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Uh, Medications, particularly antibiotics, can lead to diarrhea um, and more serious kind of chronic gut issues such as inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease can also uh, contribute to to diarrhea, loose, frequent bowel movements. And when our kids are experiencing this sort of, you know, the opposite of constipation where things are moving too fast through their system, they are not going to be having the nutrient exchange from the food that they're eating. There's not time. It's sort of gushing through the digestive system. So it can, again, lead to further issues um, in their overall health and well-being because their nutrient absorption can be affected both in diarrhea and in constipation. So what about reflux? Again, really common, particularly in babies, but reflux can be common all through uh, childhood and into adulthood. And of course, there's some really great pharmaceutical um, over-the-counter medications and uh, prescription medications that can be a godsend, you know, when um, people, kids, babies are experiencing reflux, but they don't ha- they don't come without side effects um, and long term negative effects potentially as well. So, for example, uh, we know that babies who have been given reflux medication are more likely to develop food allergies later on because that stomach acid that we are suppressing with reflux medication is important for the overall digestive process, particularly the the breakdown of proteins. And if that doesn't happen in the stomach because there's not enough stomach acid, um, because that's what the medication is doing, then proteins can be sort of um, improperly broken down and that can lead to allergies later on. So when it comes to reflux or GERD, there are many different causes, um, underlying causes that be, that can be contributing, one of which can be more sort of more of a, a physical structural problem, like a weak lower esophageal sphincter muscle. So that that is the muscle that separates the stomach from the esophagus. And when that's weak, um, you know, stomach acid can come back up into the esophagus doesn't mean we want to get rid of that stomach acid. You know, it, we want to be addressing that, um, you know, the, the strength of that, of that sphincter muscle. And there's, you know, often other things at play with this as well. Feeding issues in babies um, can be a big contributor to reflux. And so these little babies are given reflux medication with these, you know, long-term negative effects when really it's, you know, that they just need some support with the way that they're feeding. Um, So that's really common. Food intolerances are super common in babies um, and even older kids with 
uh, reflux as well. And, you know, it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but inadequate stomach acid, so not producing enough stomach acid can be at play. So, you know, it's a bit of a disaster if these kids and babies are given reflux medication to reduce that stomach acid production when they're not producing enough stomach acid in the first place. So, uh, reflux doesn't necessarily mean there's not there's there's too much stomach acid. It just means the stomach acid is coming back up to the esophagus where it shouldn't be. Lowering that stomach acid can help in a lot of cases, but inadequate stomach acid, which can also be linked to a deficiency in zinc. Zinc is needed for proper stomach acid production can be at play. Um, There can be low stomach acid, but it can still be getting up into the esophagus where it it causes those problems, the burning and that sort of thing. There can be food triggers. Um, Being overweight or obese is a a big factor when it comes to reflux as well. Overeating um, and certain medications can cause reflux. So, you know, that that old sort of um, saying of a reflux is not a, um, a, a, a PPI deficiency. You know, let's dig a bit deeper and not just jump to a PPI reflux medication. Let's look at what's causing the reflux in the first place. Uh, let's talk now about tummy pain, abdominal pain, abdominal cramping. Now, as I said earlier, lots of kids will, 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 my daughter was like this, you know, she would say, I've got a sore tummy when she just wasn't feeling right. You know, I, I later learned that that meant she was feeling anxious. Um, you know, so, so there can be a lot of, um, you know, stress and anxiety can be a big contributor to tummy pain in kids. So it might not even be gut related, Uh, You know, if we dig deeper, we know that, um, you know, when there is stress and anxiety, we do need to be looking at the gut function, but it might not be, you know, a a particular food that's setting that off. It might be uh, anxiety. Um, Food sensitivities, of course, are common with kids with abdominal pain, abdominal cramping. Um, There can be infections at play. So like Helicobacter pylori can be common with stomach pain, abdominal pain, cramping. There can be gut inflammation and there can be a whole range of different causes um, of inflammation of the gut um, and of the digestive tract. So we want to be, again, diving in a bit deeper to figure out what is going on with a child um, that has regular tummy pain and cramping. And then lastly, I just want to talk through gastro, gastro infections, because yes, of course, there are those times where we just pick up a bug, you know, we've come in contact with a nasty gastro bug and that has made the family sick, the kids sick. But when there's ongoing um, or recurrent gastro infections, we definitely want to dig a little deeper because the balance of the microbiome um, and dysbiosis that I mentioned earlier, when there's an imbalance, you know, an overgrowth of the bad or pathogenic bacteria and not enough of the healthy good bacteria or not enough diversity, not enough different species of good bacteria within the microbiome, that can leave us vulnerable or a child vulnerable to more regular gastro infections because their their microbiome isn't sort of robust enough or diverse enough to fight off these, you know, bugs that someone might come in contact with. So yes, you know, of course, they're, they're, it, it's the bacteria or virus or even parasitic infection, um, but dysbiosis is often at play, particularly with recurrent gastro infections. There can be poor hygiene practices, there can be contaminated food or water, where this bug has come from. Um, And then, you know, there can also be a weakened immune system. This is something that we want to be looking at with recurrent gastro infections. You know, why is this child not able to, um, you know, fight off these? So it comes back to that balance in the gut microbiome, but also the strength of the immune system. And of course, you know, with with gastro infections, we want uh, particularly chronic longer lasting gastro infections. You know, I'm always looking at where has this person traveled to? Have they traveled to regions where they're 
is a higher risk of infection because we really do want to knock those infections, you know, on the head as quickly as possible and do some post gastro infection work on the gut as well. You know, we see a lot of kids that have never been well since they had this particular gastro infection or never been well since they got sick in Fiji or Bali. Um, And so, you know, really important when your kids have had a gastro infection that you're doing some post gastro work, um, even if it's just a probiotic, you know, a good quality children's probiotic supplement, um, you know, that's, that's at least a start. So I have mentioned the gut microbiome, dysbiosis, imbalances in the gut microbiome uh, quite often throughout this episode. You know, this is the, the crux of gut health and we are going to be exploring that in more detail in a couple of episodes. So look out for that one coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, but really the idea of this episode was to help you understand the difference between uh, treating tummy troubles, digestive complaints with pharmaceutical medication versus, you know, diving a bit deeper and looking for the underlying cause um, and, and, you know, making you aware of some of those common underlying causes to those common tummy troubles in children. It, this can be really difficult to work out for yourself, though. So we have got lots of great content coming your way on gut health, both on this podcast, but we're also going to be sharing a lot on our Natural Super Kids Instagram page. And I'm going to be running my really popular um, gut health masterclass, completely free to come along and join um, on that. So details of that will be coming out in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be running that at the end of October. So look out for for that to really learn more about what you can do in your day-to-day habits, your weekly habits to optimize and boost and transform the health of your child's gut and digestive system. Because as I've talked about, it really is the foundation of their overall well-being. Um, And if you're struggling with figuring out, you know, what the underlying cause of your child's digestive symptoms might be, we can always help you uncover that um, in a one-on-one online consultation with one of our practitioners. That's always an option. I'll make sure the link is in the show notes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, reach out to us on Instagram over at Natural Super Kids. Let us know your takeaway. Uh, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear them. And um, there is a free resource that you can download our Kids Gut Health ebook. Um, the link for that is in our show notes as well. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.